Alrighty. Any case, hello everyone. This is a great shot once every day, bringing you a tournament cast. Yes, this is a 2v2 game. I quickly set this up, so hopefully everything works fine. Oh my god. <laughs> Richard. <coughs> Excuse me. Any case, this 2v2 is Dazara, Root Travers, Von Ivan, and Bao Lang. We actually did a cast of this with Helping Hans on his channel on Twitch earlier in the day. Hopefully you caught it. Von Ivan, Bao Lang won that battle. It was pretty awesome. Really good battle. Now, oh my, Von Ivan has a Sturm Tiger with Elite Armor. We got Mechanized Assault for good close range. We've seen this actually on this map quite a bit. Not on the right side though, so curious to see how that goes. Let's see, for the Soviets, which, by the way, they're both Soviet, we actually have the exact same Doctrine, Shock Mortar. I prefer I, I prefer the other with the with the guards, but you know what? It's still fine. You still have a nice heaping abilities. Again, the IS-2152 is the big thing you have to worry about, though. It is incredibly powerful if brought up in hurt armor and infantry alike. Any case, hopefully you guys enjoy this cast, and if you do, let me know at the very, very end. Any case, Conscript's trying to push back that Pioneer squad, realizing uh, Pioneers might have a small advantage by hugging the corner and go to close range. Pulls back. Best idea might be to pull back further. That way, again, the Pioneers, they, they can't really do as much on you. Also, Flamethrower, possibly, could be good. Meanwhile, more Conscript's trying to build some cover, but Volk Squad stops them before they can build it. And on the left side, Axis managed to get control of the fuel. But unfortunately, we have Penal's moving on in. Rutra is going with a scout car, double engineer, Penal combo. Hopefully, maybe get inside with a flamethrower ability, push them back. On the far right, we have double assault grins, a pioneer, and MG. We saw this earlier in the game. And overall, it's pretty effective until someone deployed armor. So we'll see what happens. Again, by how things have been played, right now we're going on a pure infantry focus. So again, uh, right now the Soul Grants will have advantage as long as they close that gap, but let's see how long they can do that for. MG is in the building, continuing to put pressure. Luckily on left, a little reprieve going on, be able to grab some territory. Though, Folk Squad's coming in, trying to go for that decap. Once again, they cut this off. No resources coming to the Allied lines. Looks like they were able to scare off the Volk Squads, but the Assault Grants did push on up. Double Conscripts, though, moving on in, made them retreat. We have an, oh yes, we have medics. I was gonna worry about that. We have medics healing, so don't worry. They'll be back up to full health in just a moment. Meanwhile, scout car just having a field day. Um, unfortunately, because this is not set up, we don't have a Panzerfaust yet. Unfortunately, though, you also can't run, run to the building because of these flak emplacements. So in the meantime, flamethrowers are just gonna be king in this region with the scout car predominantly causing most of the trouble. But again, enough direct fire could cause uh, it to be pushed back. Meanwhile, we also have the flamethrower from the other Sylvia player, Dazara. Doing quite well. Doing quite well. But alright, thank you, Fahu, for hosting. I shut off all the alert stuff like that so we can focus on the game. But I'll make sure if anyone does any follows, subs, or anything afterwards, I'll go through and uh, thank each and every one of you. So thank you so very much. Conscripts, trying to hold back the Salt Grins. Managed to do so. More Salt Grins coming on in. Trying to push back this scout car, but scout car with that flamethrower is too devastating of a foe. He doesn't have any AT. That's the one issue with this build. Luckily, we have a scout car. Not the one you're thinking of, though. Not the one with the auto cannon. Just an MG. Now, luckily, the MG is enough to push it back. But conscripts. Oh, now they get AT grenades. Doing enough damage with their rifles to push it back, but AT grenades would have definitely sealed the deal. Now, in case you're wondering why he would get that, of course, to counteract the scout car, but also he gets that for resources. He could do that in a bit of a bind like he is right now, try to gain some additional resources. Penal charge going off right now, trying to scare off the Volks and Sturms, kind of charging him right now. Last did not work, nor was he able to get any kills with it. Scout car falling back for some heals in the meantime. MG kind of setting up for a possible conscript flank. Again, good map awareness. I'm glad that you know that the enemy's coming up behind you. Unfortunately, is that demo? No, it's mine. Okay, I was going to say, was, were you really trying to place something right there? I'm fine if it's a mine, but demo out in the open might be a little bit more of a wild card. And easily seen. Flamethrower, though, coming in. MG will need to be 
uh, pulled back immediately. Otherwise, it will be taken out quite quickly. Assault Grens coming on in. Oh, shoot. Conscripts, though, shredding them pretty quickly. And also, we have the Engineer Squad pulling back, so it's protected by the building. Actually, switches out for the Flamethrower unit in the building. Flamethrower does incredible amount of damage. Also, he has not gotten up to T... Oh, wait, no. He uh, did he just get... Th no, he does have munitions. My apologies. They only have... He only has six munitions per turn. Why is that? Allies decap both access points, so they're getting no resources at all. So don't expect grenades from the assault grins anytime soon. Flamethrower once again coming on up, doing more damage. Now again, the Zara has two flamethrowers, which is why it's been uh, cycling back and forth. Oh, very close. Can you get the kill? Nope. Engineer squad will make it out alive. Conscript's backing up with a mortar. Wait, is that the first Soviet mortar I've seen this entire day? I think that's the first Soviet mortar I've seen this entire day. Okay. Anyway, these guys are going to try to hold back the conscript squads. It's going to be close, but I think with the mortar right there and the conscripts on the wings, I think they should be fine. But if we look at overall map control, the Axis have managed to come back a little bit. At least making sure they get some resources again. Which is helpful, you know, than the 2 and 6, respectively. Uh, but, Conscript's coming back in. May try to come around. And again, nice job with the cover. Try to build that uh, very nice cover to try to hold on to these points for as long as you can. The counterpoint would be he could rush up, use the cover so he can't be suppressed, and then throw a Molotov. Not Molotov, an incendiary grenade, or in this case, um, a lot of, uh, a lot of grenades. But again, we don't cause a lot of damage to the building, possibly uh, kill the unit inside, but we'll see. Guard, wait, uh, I'm sorry, guards. Penal troops deployed, have guards on the brain from last game. Unfortunately, crypto with the PTRS rifles, not going to be as effective. Unfortunately, if he's not going to retreat, well, then that happens. And the tide somewhat turns. Unfortunately, they're still not the best because they have double anti-tank rifles. But overall, it's, it, it could be a lot worse. Nice decap, by the way, with the shock troops once again cutting off the resources. But, yep, and even here. So we look here at the Axis. They're down to 1321. Flamethrower pushing back the MG along with the mortar. Panzer Grenadiers in a half track come in. Again, like, all right. Trying to turn the tide. Flamethrowers, though, do not care. They're sticking to their guns, or in this case, their flamethrowers, and just doing everything they possibly can to push back the enemy. Again, the flamethrower is actually doing quite a bit. We have a... No, shock troops trying to throw a grenade. Wait, do you have AT grenades? You do. Oh, he walked into that. He's trying to escape. Cannot. AT grenade's going to be thrown. He's in a bit of a pickle. Loses the half track. Oh, so close. Can you get the Panzer Grenadiers there? That's a double wipe. And Bao Lang's counterattack does not go as planned with the Soviets holding... The industrial sector of this map. Uh, pretty firmly in their hands. Shock Troops as well. Barely any scrapes or uh, scratches on him. So we can take a lot of hits. Now, the best example would be throwing a grenade. But I think the Shock Troops actually preempted that. They're trying to hug the corner. But the Salt Grens will at least win that battle. Volk Squad's pouring on in. Flamethrower trying to hide in the house. Doing quite a bit. They're grouped up. So we'll do damage. Penal Troops hiding behind cover. Try to do damage against these guys. We do have a vehicle coming in. A T-70 to be specific. Armor-wise, Baolang is still on Tier 1. He has actually not gotten anything else. He has no... He's not going to get a pack gun. He's not going to... Oh, he's not going to get Grenadiers. He is fully devoting himself to those Assault Grenadiers. And I think that could be a big F if, unfortunately, he doesn't get some form of AT. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, AT is imperative, and with that T-70 on the field, we're already seeing the Allies deploy more and more armor, which could be a big issue for him. Conscript's trying to hold him back. Nice job I did with the Minesweepers, just in case. Again, mines are incredibly important, and for the uh, Soviets, they're pretty cheap and effective. T-70 giving chase. Again, we have no form of AT, so he should be able to just walk on in. Now, this side does have the, the MG, so it's not going to stop this T-70. Now, again, we have the MG currently retreating as well, which the T-70 could get. Let's 
gonna be um, at least one model? No models. I'm actually surprised. Oh wait, here's some more. Th that's a goner. We lost one assault grandier squad with that. Puma though coming into play. Von Ivan is not going down, and he's bringing on the big guns, or in this case, the incredibly agile, nimble, and accurate guns. Maybe just not the hardest hitting. Flamethrower's having a battle on right, but the Soviet once again prevails. Puma being backed up by Volk squads and, and uh, Minesweeper. Nice idea. Moving on in. Again, unfortunately, that uh, T-70 not going to be as effective. Finally, he decides, you know what? The Light Mechanized Company, you know, should probably get up to Tier 2. Probably should get it. Might help me. Von Ivan, on the other hand, he's gone mechanized. He has yet to go. Anything else? But again, fully relying on that Puma. Might be his best shot. Luckily, again, he is grabbing the left-hand side. Oh, he did lose the scout car. Oh, or, yeah. So that is a... Not great. Penal troops are over here. Some of them with AT. So the Puma will have a little bit of a rough time. I mean, sure, the Puma can do damage. But the penal troops could also do quite a bit to him. Meanwhile... Certain Pioneers and, and Assault Grand trying to push on this side. But now Conscript Squad with a Flamethrower. To be fair, he did... Uh, Dazar did lose a, fl uh, a unit. But still, very powerful. Now, there's a Flamethrower lying in wait right there. And this one will do a lot more damage against the person in the building. T-70 trying to pop shots against the Volk Squad. Meanwhile, Penal uh, Penal's trying to push on forward. Cindy are going to burn him out. Fortunately, not enough to keep him in there. Oh, this is going to be risky. Puma going after the T-70. He has to watch out for this. He needs to stay far away from the penal because the satchel could be in his future. T-70 and Puma in a pitch battle. Gets the kill, but barely hanging in. Needs to get out of there. I don't see anything around. He could get back to friendly territory. Conscript's running on in. Can you get the AT grenade? Oh, it's so close. Penals though, walked right in and he's back up again. He's microing, he's trying to figure out where to go, what to do. He's backed up literally into a forest, going the long way. The base MG is now opening fire on him. He is so low on health. He's now backing all the way this way. And to be fair, there's no AT, nothing stopping him. Clutch play by Von Ivan. And he manages to get his Puma back to safety. There's no mines here as well, so he should be A-OK. -okay. Very good job. Very good job, Ivan Ivan, to keep his Puma alive. Really good play there. Meanwhile, once again, we have more flamethrowers going out on the right. Shock troops dodging all those grenades by the assault grens, while still we had forces try to capture mid, backed up by MG support. Once again, decapped here, losing resources. So right now, we have Yet to see battle phase two or even battle phase three. I'm assuming my my only thought process would be maybe saving up for the heavy tank. That's why he's not. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Put down in the comments. I'll read it later. See what you guys think at this time in the game. Anyway, T34 has been deployed, which is good thing that Von Ivan saved the Puma because right now they're gonna need it. We do have a pack 40 being brought up. Very good idea. Pushes this thing back, but we have no snares. No snares by Bao Lang. So, unfortunately, that's going to be a huge issue because that T-70 will free reign. Now, there are some mines of the Soviet variety, not, <laughs> not the OKW. So, big issue right there. Puma coming on in. Shock Troops on the retreat. MG's still there running suppression. MG, again, back up one, making sure everything's covered. Volk squads now being hit by armor piercing rounds. Has he stolen one? Oh, even better. Even better. All right. Again, maybe not the best armor piercing round, but it still does damage. Then uh, if it didn't, also another MG moving on in, backed up by an AT gun. We have a building going out, so tier four stuff being developed. We also, again, already had tier four stuff over here with the T-34. But I don't think we're going to see anything else. I'm assuming what the Zara will do is save up for the ISU 152. Meanwhile, Rutra, I think, would benefit up with some armor. 
Which also, the fact that they went double shock troops is concerning for him because assault grenades I don't think can match. I mean, like, yes, assault grenades if they can throw the grenades, could be effective. They're pinned. This would be an opportunity for grenades, but he threw a grenade to stop him from pushing. All the grenades are just out of range. A little health damage, but nothing too severe. Meanwhile, Conscript Squad coming on in with a T-34. Getting some nice shots. Pack Gun opening fire on the T-34. But T-34 barely manages to get outside of its range. Shock Troops coming in from the other side. Bao Lang is definitely in need of some help. Luckily, Puma's in town. And we'll see how well that does. Bounce the first, missed the second. Pack confirms a good hit on the third. Misses again. Something just blew up. I'm not entirely sure what it was. Oh, we have oh, again. He has the heat shell. So extra armor piercing. Gonna most likely kill the T70. Misses the shot. Gonna give chase. All right, was that bounce really? Okay, now the Puma's out for revenge. I don't see any mines in its direct line of sight. Another bounce? Really? Finally, a good hit. Again, I'm not seeing... Alright, once again, the Puma's behind enemy lines. Running into the conscripts. Trying to get the kill on the shock troops. A little risky. Doesn't get the kill. Conscripts coming on in. Now it's backing up again. Unfortunately, we all know what's right there. Oh no, the Conscript Squad, if, if the Conscript Squad would have let him be. Where is this Puma going? Von Ivan's just trying to get it out. Doesn't have enough for smoke. He's gonna hide behind the building. He's, go He's being closed in right now. He drops smoke. An effort to get around them. He's going up. He's going on the left. He's trying. He's making a run for it. Unfortunately, AT grenade was thrown. And there goes the Puma. Von Ivan tried, but there's so many conscript squads. He was just boxed in. Oh, good attempt there. Good attempt to try to get out. But at least he did kill the, the T-34. So overall, that was a positive. Anyway. Counterattack, meanwhile, in the region, since all the conscripts had to fall back. That's allowing for, um, who is it? Uh, shoot. Bao Lang to kind of come in and try to capture some territory. Unfortunately, even though that was the case, still not enough. Shock troops were still there to kind of hold him back. Grenade being thrown. Gonna miss. On the far left, we haven't really touched on this area. Penal troops and MG just trying to push up against the Volks. Another MG. Luckily, a flank by the flamethrower is gonna burn that one out. Meanwhile, in mid, we do have uh, Volk squads pushing on in, trying to push out the MG. Oh, good mine right there on the Volk squad. Very good mine right there. We have actually a second Soviet mine right there. So we can see that uh, Rutra is at least playing more defensive. He has both of these Soviet players have placed good mines. Also, good decap by Von Ivan. Once it, cutting off the, uh, the some of the um, the Soviet resources. That's good. Although, still, Soviets are more likely than not still going to control both fuel. A lot of MGs being developed by Von Ivan. Those are MG34s as well. Shock Troops coming on the flank against his Volk squads. I'm assuming that's the reason why he's making so many. Although, he does have a stolen Maxim. Interesting. Penal Troops coming on in. We have a Katusha that was developed. The Zari is yet to deploy any additional armor. Bai Lang is not anywhere close to getting armor. He's going up to phase three, so I'm assuming yes, he's he's saving him for the tiger. He's going for the long haul. Von Ivan, well, we saw the Puma, unfortunately, take a lot of resources. So right now, not developing a Panzer headquarters. Oh, going in for the base, very cheeky move, but alas, gets a couple hits, not any wipes. Up, oh, MG just came out the wrong time. Luckily, he wasn't hit by any rockets. Could have been a lot worse. Meanwhile, another mine going off, stopping the Pioneers. Assault Grens, though, upgraded with six-man squads. Make him a little better in combat. Conscripts with flamethrowers, though, pushing him back. Grenades being thrown once again. 
This could be a big hit. It is, and he kills the squad, grabs a flamethrower, and walks away the victor of at least that small skirmish. Shock Troops coming in. We're probably going to lose another MG on the left. Another MG being developed, but grenade being thrown right on target. Gets a good hit, stops the suppression, and kills a second squad. Bizarre is jumping from MG to MG with good efficiency and managing to get a number of good shots in. Uh, victory point wise, we can definitely see the allies are doing a lot better than the Axis. Hopefully, the Axis are able to turn the tide and capture some of these critical VP points. It looks like they managed to, this Sulkrens managed to push back the conscripts. There is an AT gun here, along with some additional conscripts and a mortar. But uh, overall, just not. Uh, yeah, overall, it that's going to be short lived. As the Soviets submit a, or submit a, uh, engine, I can't talk, engineer to capture this point. That's what four hours of casting will do to you. You just start spouting words, you don't know what you're saying. Another MG kind of moving on to the point. Pack gun being brought up. Again, I'm not seeing any armor. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Zara's Revenge is in town. Remember, bring out the ISU-152. We're still at least another four minutes away from the Tiger being uh, brought in. Katusha coming in on the MG, stopping the decap of the fuel. Out of what, the four MGs that Von Ivan had, he's down to two. Meanwhile, the Engineer Squad, up to vet three, give him credit. In the retreat after trying to go for the decap. Folk squads in a vet four stern pushing on forward. Meanwhile, ISU 152 should probably switch to explosive rounds and just start laying waste. Now, luckily, Paul Lang is like, okay, double pack gun is needed. But unfortunately, this thing is already on the field. And even though you have still have one pack gun here, it's gonna be definitely a bane in your infantry's existence, especially if you get some good shots. Luckily, we had a miss right there. Explosive rounds are not on. We only have armor piercing. That could be, again, versing all this infantry, that can be construed as a big F. It'll do some damage, but not a lot. He does need to switch. Right now, that's currently the biggest thing holding back a Soviet advance in the region. Shock Troops pushing on in, pushing back the Volk squads with ease. MG backing him up, although Shock Troops being suppressed. In both sectors, although once again, nice grenade by Dazar. Extra bowling, bringing up that extra pack gun. You're still on armor piercing. Low the explosive rounds, man. What are you doing? Conscripts grabbing the point. Shock troops pushing back the remaining like scattered forces. Smoke grenade going out. Try to get around that MG. They can go both ways and over easily overwhelm it. We have double for rivers being made. Again. Both of them quickly realized that, yeah, there's a there's a monster on the field and they need to tar take it out with everything they have. Unfortunately, the MG is going to be, oh, maybe taken out? Shock Troops could get a final kill if they stop being suppressed. It's retreating. Penal's following them. It's very close, but it looks like they'll manage to escape. ISU-152, again, right now we moved into to fight the packs. Pack gun should win as long as this thing doesn't change to explosive rounds. Because it's not going to do all that much. Rucha, by the way, also very close to getting an ISU-152. Again, uh, Bao Lang is close to a Tiger, which would be a lot better with the, the armor piercing rounds. But we'll see. Once again, going for the decap, manages to get it. MG suppressing, or like, will suppress anything that comes in this vicinity. We have another MG kind of moving on up. Can quickly recap that territory, pushing on in, but alas, the MG is stopping him in his tracks. Katusha coming on in, knocking a lot of kills, but at least will deter forces from coming in. If they do, they'll probably get smashed. Again, it's a really intense battle going on. ISU 152 still, this thing's been on the field for three minutes, and there's been no Axis armor, and yet you're still on armor piercing rounds. The Zara, what are you doing? This one has switched to explosive rounds. So that, that's, that, that's positive. Look how much damage that one did. One shot, first shot on the field, immediately kills the Volk squad. Tazar's like, mine's defective. Oh wait, did he? Okay, he finally switched armor uh, to explosive rounds. Okay. Now expect to see a lot of slaughtering going on. 
in terms of all the German infantry. And again, as long as the other Soviet forces provide sight, these ic 152s can essentially be long-range snipers. But we're about to see a Tiger, I assume, get deployed. And Von Ivan is deploying his Panzer Headquarters building, so he's not done yet. Meanwhile, I assume 5 2 getting some good snipes on target. Bringing that Verkamerfer down to a bare minimum of health. Again, one more shot should bring it down further. Finish it off. So close, manages to get the retreat in. Maxim stopping any infantry from, um, well, on both sides from coming on in. With the MG34 guarding the other. You have a... Wait, is that really an MG34 fight? We have an MG34 fight. Alright, that's funny. The two MG34s looking at each other from across while Penal Squad burning alive. Not the best idea to get in there. Good incendiary, by the way, from that Volk Squad. Meanwhile, a counterattack on right. Pioneers coming on in to clear mines and use flamethrowers to clear the buildings. ic 152 moving on the field to stop those Pioneers in its tracks. You're going to get a good shot? Is the question of the day. Okay, a relatively good shot. And look how much more effective it is. Bring down the building when you just got in. Tiger tank. Good job. Knocking out that, uh, I believe it was a, I believe it was an engineer squad. Conscripts trying to fight those assault, uh, Grandiers. And with the shock troops right there, it's easily going to be able to do so. Squad wipe inevitable at this point. Gets the kill. Tiger trying to help out. But again, it's still explosive, so the Tiger might actually have a, a brief window where this, it doesn't have to worry about the Ice 152 because it can't, it won't do all that much. It'll just do that nice little bounce. A little puff of uh, fire in front of the Tiger. Meanwhile, this one's so high explosive and damaging the Verkaden Morphers. Can't even get the Sturm Tiger without Panzer authorization. Ice 152 giving full chase, going after the pack gun, destroying all the cover in the process. Goodbye to that wall. Double MG backing up, but unfortunately the double explosive round knocking out the pack. Pack gun fires one last shot in retribution. But ic 152 backing up with still plenty of health left. Explosive rounds are just bouncing off the Tiger with ease. Tiger managing to push back some of the infantry. Meanwhile, Von Ivan is capturing the fuel and got back the star. <sighs> small victories. You have to have small victories where you can. MG's recapturing that point. Once again, it's going to be a battle for mid with both ISU, I'm oh, sorry, ISU 152s just lighting up any piece of infantry that comes in. They really need armor. Luckily, Von Ivan just got Panzer authorization. He's one step closer to getting some armor to help him win this game. Tiger tank coming around the flank. We know what's over here. It's. Oh, okay. Just barely missing it, though. But. Both ICUs and the AT guns are looking the wrong way, except for one of them gets a nice shot with the Tiger on that AT gun. Kadusha opening fire, hitting this entire region. Not much hitting it. There's some MGs, but overall not. It's, it could be a lot worse. Wow, that, that was actually a perfect uh, hit on both sides. Didn't hit it. Tiger tank, 16 kills, doing very well for itself. One ICU has 19, the second one has 15. Meanwhile, Rutra is capturing back the left-hand side. Again, with that VP point, that was slowing down this, the, uh, the, the, uh, the plummeting VP points that the Axis currently have in reserve. But right now, they, they, they need, they absolutely need to start capturing these points. But alas, army-wise, they are down to almost half an army the Soviets have. Luckily, this Tiger Tank is still a good resourceful unit. By the way, Bao Lang has lost all of his um, assault grenadiers in this fight. IC-152 continues to snipe away at the infantry. Von Ivan definitely taking losses as well. But closer to getting something at the bare minimum. Whether that's an, uh, whether I'll have enough time to get a panther or just have to fall back on the Sturm Tiger is anyone's guess. Although the mine finally goes off. Hit, or I believe it was a mine. Tiger Tank needs to fall back. Battle going on left. Volk Squad and Sturms being suppressed by the MG. Uh, grenade really didn't do all that much, but Shock Troops giving chase, pushing back the men. Massive battle going in. And the IC-152 uh, the IC is being pushed back by the Vakan Murphers, but just backing up outside of their range and using the Engineer that's right here as essentially recon to then snipe the Vakan Murphers. 
Oh, we're going to get one last shot. Gets two models. And a nice grenade with the shock troops from the retreat. Kills the MG. And Von Ivan, having it one time four MGs, has been brought down to zero. Tiger tank is being brought up. A lot of pioneers are being developed. I guess that's the new frontline unit for Bao Lang. Again. Could, wow, oh, I just realized the mortars. Okay. I didn't mean yet. I, I, I know I said earlier that I haven't seen a mortar in so far all day. Another mine. I was wait. Oh, and the SU-85 could easily just snipe it from afar. That tiger needs to pull back now. Blitzkrieg. I don't think Blitzkrieg's going to work. Your engine is kaput. Come on, retreat. IAC-152 still an explosive. We have a Sturm Tiger quickly making its way up to the front. Tiger tank being slowly ripped apart. Don't know what happened here. It's just sitting there. His engine is not entirely gone. It's just damaged. He can still move. Oh, it's decrewed! Oh! Oh, come on. Put a Soviet man in there. I want a Soviet Tiger. Sturm Tiger misses. Does shell shocks him, but does miss. The Tiger tank could be taken by the Soviets. If it wasn't for the game being over. Let's double, again, very good game. Overall, the gamble for getting heavy armor paid off really well. The Axis, if maybe if they would have played some lighter stuff earlier, could have really helped. Von Ivan coming in with some great Puma plays. The highlight of the day. Ball laying strategy with the Assault Grins, though, I think is what, do, uh, what brought them down. Unfortunately, they didn't have enough AT. They're just good at close range where the conscripts uh, were good at long. And then the assault grins were eventually out sh uh, were out damaged by the shock troops coming in on the right. As we can see, these shock troops, 39 kills, definitely doing very well some for themselves. But conscripts doing very well as well. Overall damage, we have Dazar with 29,000 damage. Very good job. Most kills as well. Although, you could work on your ISU 152 uh, reloader gameplay by making sure you have the correct round in fighting infantry. Meanwhile, Von Ivan has a small lead in terms of overall damage and got most kills and least losses. Really good job. Again, I think this would have been a little better without the Assault Grens only tactic. I think additional Grenadiers or snipers or something would have really helped out. We are back for the final game. V Rutra, the Zara having a fantastic game last game, but they were, they had a fantastic game as the Soviets last game, but now they're the Wehrmacht and OKW. Meanwhile, Bal Lang and Von Ivan have switched over to Soviet. Uh, although to be fair, we've seen like American and British, but you know, I'm curious to see why they keep going Soviet. Hey, if that's what they like, that's what they like. But, we'll see how this play goes. Because, again, we've seen these doctrines used before today. I have not seen elite troops. We'll see if the Tigrace is enough to seal it for Dazara Arutra. Or, will the combined armed conscripts with the uh, weapons be enough to seal the deal um, in any capacity? Again, we have lots of conscripts being deployed, which makes sense. Especially if Bao Lang is going to be supporting them with the airdrop weapons. Again... Going in, again, castle area, grabbing that fuel. Oh, wait. Yeah, grabbing the fuel. Going at the very edge to keep on moving. To keep on progressing. Volk squads and Panzerfusseliers. Again, uh, from what we saw earlier, Panzerfusseliers are not as effective unless they get the G43 rifles um, against other infantry. But they could be used very well with the snare ability. Because, the unfortunately, what we saw last game was the Volk squads didn't have that ability against that scout car. So just in case, they're like, okay, maybe that would be the reason to get one. To kind of snare a scout vehicle. Any case. MG kind of watching over this concert squad. Nice job with the cover. It's going to be a while before this thing gets suppressed. Though... With the Grandiers and MG, it will definitely be taking some damage. Conscripts fighting the Volk squads who play some cover for themselves. But Conscripts coming in on the flank. They should be enough to deal, uh, to seal that deal. Engineers grabbing the, that, uh, grabbing that point while Conscripts. And a, another Conscript squad comes in to push back the Punzival Slayer squad. This one squad's gonna lose, especially, yeah, it's 2v1. The question is, will the Conscripts lose a single model? Nope, they lost one. He's lost one and had to pull back. Three down, only one for the conscripts. Not too shabby. 
Especially since the models are weaker in general. Wow, battle between Pioneers and Engineers, and Pioneers barely managed to win the game. Conscript still managing to hold on there, but we have a flank coming on in by Von Ivan to put an end to the MG. MG unable to suppress the Conscripts who walk right through and are now focusing on the MG. MG having to redeploy. Conscripts still firing from their uh, cover position. I'm not entirely sure why you placed it. Okay, never mind. Conscript squad fell back. MG. Very cool. I guess he just realized he couldn't out DPS the MG and decided to retreat. Although there's a large grouping of Conscripts on right. Stern Pioneer Squad very close to losing another model. Barely manages to get out of there. Meanwhile, coming in against the one Volk Squad, at this point, I would pull back. There's no way that one squad's going to be able to hold off against all of them. Oh, wait, no. I take that back. Panzerville Slayers and Conscripts coming in from the other angle. Behind heavy cover as well. Good flanking opportunity. MG as well coming in to suppress the blob and push them back. For those who don't know, I consider a blob three or more units that are in close proximity to each other. Note, a blob is not necessarily a bad thing. There is a smart blob and a dumb blob. A smart blob is someone who micros each every, an individual unit inside that group. A dumb blob is someone who just, you know, you, tells them all to do the exact same thing. So, good job getting all, that, all those troops out in one piece. Meanwhile... Volk Squad trying to go for that fuel. Although, to be fair, they already have the fuel over here. I guess the idea would be to decap it, but it hasn't been capped. So, Conscript Squad coming back in. We ha again, we've purely seen Conscripts. Now we have some SVT rifles equipped to them, making them slightly better. Flamethrower going at it, trying to push them out of cover. They are grouped up as well, causing a little more damage. Oh, that was a good hit right there. Down to a quarter health. Meanwhile, Conscript's grabbing the other VP points. And again, being flanked from behind by the Engineers. Will that be enough? And it is. Rusha falls back immediately. Uh, meanwhile, Dazara, we're still only at Battle Phase 1. Rutra is now getting a mechanized building. We're not seeing a ton of AT. Okay, we're not seeing any AT. We don't even have AT grenades. So, a Luke's would be, in my opinion, very effective against this infantry. But we'll see what happens. Again, I know they could very easily upgrade. But as long as you kept your distance, I think a Lukes would be very good. And I believe also we mentioned earlier in a game, uh, actually a very similar game compared to this with uh, helping Hans, where the Lukes gameplay would have been a preferable outcome than a Puma. But we'll see. We'll see what Rucha picks. Uh, Sturm Officer has been deployed. Again, nice helpful unit. Another good grouping on Conscripts over here. Unfortunately, this building is not in the best state. They're going to do a lot of damage to the big men in the building, but the Volk squads can't really return fire all that much. Positive note would be the conscripts on left grabbing the fuel on left. And, well, okay. Unfortunately, it is the cap, so they're, even if they... Oh, man, so close to grabbing it. They're trying to kill the flamethrower squad. They probably will. There's so many men. I would make the assumption. No, he managed to live. He managed to live. Meanwhile, Conscript's coming on in. Slowly but surely. We're, oh, Rifle Grenade gets a model or two. Pioneers and Grandiers trying to pick off that remaining Conscript squad. Large amount of troops coming on in, pushing back the Conscripts from taking over that fuel. But this point is decapped, making, making pretty much the, um, the Soviets unable to get a lot of resources, which is imperative for the Axis. Because right now, if they can stop them from getting armored, that's a huge win. Right off the gate. Now, we do have DP guard troops. Again, not the best for uh, a light armored unit. But I still think the Lukes is by far the best option. Because right now, we have yet to see any light armor. And the intentions made by the Soviets, we're not seeing it. Although, we do have a we do have a tier 3 unit being made. Rifle grenade going out from the corner. Gets a nice shot on the guards and pushes them back. Though, additional conscripts and flamethrower coming in on them. Overall, the Axis do have a few more men, which is definitely helping them. It's definitely opening up a map control. Conscripts, though, pushing them back. Conscripts should have the opportunity, hopefully, to take over this right-hand side. Just have need to push back the Sturm Officer. But they have more than enough force they should be able to. Meanwhile, on the left, another intense battle. Panzer Grandier is being made by Dazara. Again, Flamethrower pushing them back quite easily. 
I, I was unsure if it was retreating, coming up, and it's like, okay. Vaughn Ivan just, again, outranging the Panzergrenadiers, and again, with the SVT rifles, should be able to do more damage because they're in cover. Unfortunately, they're down. It's hard to see because of it being captured, but they're down to three models. So that would be a big issue. But overall, because of the cover and range, those conscripts will do a, a lot better than they should. Versing Panzer Grenadiers if they close the gap. Grenadiers and one, two more conscripts opening fire, but backed up by an MG. Should be able to push them back. Although, got G4 rifles. Nice rifle grenade. Perfect shot, but not enough to cause any damage on that conscript squad unfortunately in terms of killing any models brought the health down but not any models lukes is on the field already got a single kill and meanwhile we do have conscripts now equipped with at conscripts moving on in guard troops picking off the oh panzer grenadier squad getting sniped very nice shot and then coming back no molotovs might be a little bit of an issue but They'll at least be able to do some damage. Unfortunately, he also doesn't have AT grenades. He does have an AT gun. Von Ivan is not without AT. He just got it. But that being said, this Luke's going to have a field day with his men in the meantime. Except for the guard troops. Guard troops in heavy cover. That's going to be a... That, 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 that's going to be a hard hurdle to dislodge. But we'll see what happens next. Grandier's pushing on in for multiple... Areas, Pioneers grabbing this point, but got hit by a Soviet mine, I assume. AT gun coming in. Panzer Grenadiers. Oh, I thought that grenade was going to do a lot more, but a little bit of health damage, not all that much. Could have been a lot worse. Conscripts coming on in for that health point. Meanwhile, Snare and Pioneers going in for the fuel. Double Conscripts using the heavy cover. Push back the Volk squads and shred them with ease. But Panzerfusslier is upgraded with G43 rifles and Volk Squad coming on in. The Tsar, again, we have yet to see uh, escalate the battle phase two. Not a lot of fuel coming in. Again, both sides. Oh, okay. Have uh, bad their fuel just off and on this entire game. Unable to keep a steady supply for very long. Rutra is still mechanized. Has yet to deploy any others. Meanwhile, for the Soviets, we are... We do have a tier 4 building and a T-70 being developed by Bo Lang, which could be a good counter for uh, not only the infantry, you do have to watch out for the long-range AT rifle grenade from the Panzer Slayers. Also, the fact he doesn't have a Burkhan Warfare might be a small issue. Actually, yeah, actually, that's a good, that's a good point. As long as he keeps the T-70 away, he can play. There's no pack guns, nothing, no Burkhan Warfers. No AT, and it's the 10-minute mark. Golden rule, make sure you have a, a good form of AT by 10 minutes. Because that's when the enemy will start deploying stuff that will really shred your infantry. Well, and Ivan's infantry are just holding on, grabbing the fuel. Counterattack by Bo Lang with double AT. Oh boy, he is ready for that Lukes to come around that corner. He is ready. Grand Ears moving on, and Lukes is on the other side of the field, though. AT gun is opening. Oh, I think it's trying to direct fire because I think the brush is kind of hiding it. Grand Ears trying to get a nice shot. Fortunately, very low on health. Probably need to pull back, especially with all the conscripts right there. Down to one model. Very low on health. What the? Did that thing just get two kills with a single shot? Okay, good shot, AT gun. Great shot. Meanwhile, T70 very low. Been hit by a double Panzerfaust and the Lukes. It's so close to dying, but the conscripts are preventing the Lukes from getting the final kill on that thing's rear armor. It is getting a lot of damage on the conscripts, though, and Stern Pioneers in heavy cover keeping the fight going. What do we got? We got a Puma. A Puma going hunting for a T70. Again, good counter for the light armor. Meanwhile, on left. Von Ivan is consistently trying to keep the battle going all against that fuel. But alas, that is simply not the case. Unable to take that fuel. The Germans will re-get it. Uh, sorry, recontrol it along with that VP point. But it is rather close in, ter in terms of overall VP. But the axes are a little more down. And overall, that will continue to be that way as they grab the the third VP point. Grab it, keep it under their control. Oh, wait, no. Actually, I take that back. The Tsar has taken his. What's being called in? We got uh, 
SVTs for the conscripts, which, by the way, have been equipped for both armies. Good, helpful resource. Also, you get munitions if it, you can't get a, a weapon out of it. But, yeah, it's a pretty good combo. Plus, a Dushka, very good MG to help shred infantry and light armor alike with the armor piercing rounds. Good shot grenade, again, with the elite troops. We, okay, he's going for the support armor corp, so does that mean the Panzer IV about to be deployed? That Panzer IV Oswind, I would say, would be good. Uh, my only concern would be this double AT line that is currently on the field. Nice artillery barrage in mid, along with the T-70, causing a ton of damage to Panzer IV's so smoke squads. Puma going in, but the AT gun is guarding. Good Panzer file stops the T-70. AT grenade being thrown. Puma is heavily damaged, trying to get the heck out of there. Rultra being overly ambitious. AT guns lying on the wings as well, pushing back the Lukes quite effectively. Small Axis counterattack does not pay off. AT gun just backs up and then moves back to, uh, to the front. MG, again, I love it. Using the Conscript's cover, keeping this area under, uh, under um, control of the Germans while also grabbing the munition point. Which would be double munitions for the Germans for the foreseeable future. Do we have more SVTs dropping, really? Who else needs... Oh, okay, you have more conscripts. Okay, I was going to say, I thought you had all your conscripts quit with it already. Conscripts rushing on in, grabbing the cover back. And, uh, yeah, Germans are fully, retre fully retreating. Which, by the way, please tell me you... Okay, you have medical. Very cool. I, I like that position. You're helping out your ally. Good job. Good teamwork. And, again, 2v2s, you have to rely on teamwork. And making sure you don't put a medical down and waste all the resources. Nice little bonus. Unfortunately, the Soviets can't do that. But I'm glad to see both of them do have medics. So they can keep their men in the fight. Grenade going off. Nice little incendiary. I, I, yep. Conscript's going to pull back. Luke's opening fire on him as well. Along the Sturm officer to grab that point. Panzer IV being developed again. Needing to watch out for that double AT, but overall not a bad choice, not by any stretch. At least that will keep armor on the field until I assume you save up for the Tiger Ace. I'm going to make the assumption that's what you're going to do. Rucha, again, still has the Puma and the Lukes mostly healed up. A, a couple scrapes on the Lukes, but overall too, relatively fine. Victory point-wise, it is very close. But, again... Act, uh, Soviets are keeping a good hold on all the victory points and keeping the timer at the bare minimum Even if it's one VP point against them uh, Ticking against the Axis Meanwhile, we have a Panzer IV charging an AT gun. AT gun decides to pull on back so it doesn't Unfortunately get destroyed or flanked Meanwhile, Volk Squad's Pilots Full Slayers going in for the push but T-70 pushing them back once again Puma lying in wait, but again, we still have the double AT right there. It can't, uh, you can't, you have to be very careful with how you engage. But we, what we saw with Von Ivan last time is you can absolutely dive and make it out. You can absolutely do that. Meanwhile, what do we have on left? Grandiers opening fire, pushing back the conscripts. Panzer Grandiers being hit by a mine. Good play right there. And be, uh, pulling back off the munitions. Conscripts. Trying to go for the, uh, trying to decap that point, but the Lukes are just picking them off. Hiding behind the building. AT guns are unable to really get a good t hit on target. And unfortunately, it gets out with just one hit under its belt. Once, oh, uh, finally, again. Germans recapture that point. Guard troops coming on in with conscripts backing them up. We have a T-34-85 on Ivan's gun, Tier 4. We have a T-34-76 being developed by Bo Lang. Uh, Dazar has a Stug being made. Again, Panzer IV is fine, but it will have a rough time bursting this 85mm T-34. Stug being developed, so Rutra is going full in and decided to go fully mechanized with a Puma, a Luke's, and a Stuka. Panzer IV as well, getting a nice penetrating shot with the Panzerfels knocking out its engine. On the right, we have a T-70 getting some great shots on the Volks. Puma coming in. A lot of AT, though, lying in wait for them to charge the T-70. But this could be a great shot for the Stuka, which could annihilate both support weapons. The only... Oh, wait, no. Rucha also got the Panzer Headquarters, so he can get Obelso Dotten. So he can still get that uh, elite infantry if he, if he wants to. 
Or lock down, t down territory if he needs to. Conscript squad. Opening fire against Pencil Slayer and the Volk squad. T-34 coming to assist. We have an AT gun as well. Find the Panzer IV along with the T-3045. Still there. Just repairing with vehicle repairs. T-34 getting some shots. Nice shot. Two models down on the Panzer Fusilier squad. And we have the Puma that may try to go in there for the hits. AT guns are in this... Um, in the broken down castle. Oh, good hit with the AT grenade on the Puma. AT guns could try to fire some pop shots. But the last not really working. Stuka opening fire. I'm assuming it's against these guys. Getting out of the way. Puma doesn't even get a model down. Anyway, meanwhile. Great ears with G43 rifles advancing. Against the AT gun. T34 having a rough time. Stuki doing what it needs to. It's a light tank destroyer. But it's keeping the target back. It's keeping him away. Exactly what you need. Meanwhile, they're grabbing the VP point. They still got the Panzer IV fully healed. They're getting a Katusha right now. Although... Allies have been doing very well this entire game. They're starting to be a little bit more on the back foot. Dazara especially has been a very aggressive in keeping the fight toward the enemy. Now, there is an AT gun here. So, uh, yeah, that's that may end up being an overextension. Unfortunately, there's no mines over here, so he can just pull back in that general direction. Oh, T-34! Going in for the ram! He's not going to ram him, though. He's just getting close for the hit! Once again, Von Ivan gets in the amazing ram by AKA not ram, just trying to close the gap for another excellent shot. His engine is going to be a bit under, uh, underpowered for a few moments until it recovers. Then it'll be up to full speed. Gets a great shot with the T3045. Stu needs to close, uh, not close the gap, but get out of the gap in order to uh, not be hit again by the its 85 millimeter gun. Alas, it's not going to engage. Great play once again by Von Ivan. Making this anyone's game. T-3045 is like, I'm not done yet. I need to push back the Grand Air Squad. Uh, now I'm done. I'm going to pull back and heal. For Kenworth on left. Again, Arutra could go with an upgrade Panzer authorization, which would help seal uh, some territory and make sure they don't get recaptured. AT guns using artillery to push back the Volk squads. Good job of Bao Lang. Doing a lot better in this game. Again, look at the amount of units he has. He's absolutely the largest army in play. With a huge conscript force and a support force. He may not have the best armor, but that does not matter. His infantry is supreme. And pushing back the Ponsonfusilers, the Volk squads. Even the Lukes can't even get in there without being pushed back by the AT. So good job there. But... Axis are managing to hold the VP points, bringing them down ever closer to the allied VP point uh, VP point total. So again, good job there. Good job, allies and Axis, getting very close. G43 or rifle, uh, rifles equipped uh, Panzer Grenadiers opening fire. That was a hell of a sentence. Pushing back the Dushka, but the T34 is getting some nice shots. Stu coming in for a change to come on in. Meanwhile, actually, it looks like it switched up. Volk squads coming on left. Getting a kill on the Verkenwerfer. That would have been taken over by the Conscripts if it would have retreated. Stuka coming in. I'm unsure if it's going to hit like here. Oh, it does! He's waiting with the AT gun, I assume. Oh, wait, yep, he's waiting. He's going to cap the point and he's going to get the heck out of there. Oh, no, he's not! <laughs> the men on the unit actually help hold it back. Meanwhile, the Stug is going after a T-34. Bad move. Double AT is still there. Stug is taking way too many hits. Barely alive. T-34 going in. Bounces off target. Could go for the kill. But alas, with the amount of infantry and AT, that would be a really bad decision. And again, unfortunately, it is a bad decision. He can't close the gap. He doesn't do what, like, example, um, Von Ivan did with uh, ramming to get close. But even if he did do that, the Puma would have killed him. So overall, that was a bad engagement, and he did lose it. Luckily, T-34 able to turn that battle into a positive and manages to kill the Mortar and keep pressure on the Puma and the Lukes, both of which have no chance by themselves to hold back a T-34. The Puma maybe get lucky and disable its turret, but that Lukes is unfortunately going to be a goner if he gets another direct hit. Does! 
It does hud huddling around the building. Puma bounces off, but the Lukes is the crew. They can always get another, or sorry, get it back up. Conscript's pouring on in, trying to grab this point. Luckily, T3485 kills target while also grabbing left. Good counterattack by Von Ivan. Bao did lose some of his men. He's getting another base T34 up. Let's see what the Axis are going to deploy. We have another Stug being deployed in an effort to hold back the T34. A lot of really good infantry. Let's not denou uh, denounce that. Luckily, Katusha's opening fire trying to push him out. But a lot of really, really highly vetted Grenadier squads. So good job with that. Well, same thing with the conscripts. Yeah, I love this. Using the dead Lukes as cover to hold on to that point. Um, a mine right there. Pushing them back. More mines being placed all over. Conscript dodging the shot. Pooh must be very cautious. They need minesweepers. Otherwise, he's just going to keep running into mines on the right. Meanwhile, a bit of a more of a mixed bag on left. Again, it, luckily, a Dazar is able to capture some territory. But Van Ivan has the sights trained on him and moving on in. Very interesting to see. Yeah, don't expect a Tiger Race in this match. And Rucha just got Panzer Authorization, so they need, they absolutely need fuel. T-34 being pushed back by the Puma and the Stug. Hey, but sometimes the, the biggest, the biggest, um, uh, I get, uh, the biggest, uh, most complex units can be easily taken out by some, uh, sometimes the simplest. And in this uh, situation, a lot of Stugs, if, if used correctly, could overwhelm the T-34. Alas, in this situation, that may not be the case. This... Oh, wait, maybe it will be. It is Vet 2. Um, uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have enough uh, munitions just because of the lack of supply. Oh, my God. 58 munitions? Holy mackerel. That's a, that a good amount. Puma as well pulling on back. Only one kill. Conscripts going in for the point. Axis are on the back foot. They have the smaller army right now. At one point, the Allies had it. Now it's the Axis. They're going to need to pull out a Hail Mary in order to turn this around. But if they can knock, if they can at least knock out one of the T-3045s, if not both, that, that could do it. Katusha coming in right at, around their entrance. So that's going to hurt a lot of units. Knocks out the MG, which is a big oof, as the veteran suit was actually quite nice on it. Conscripts fighting the SVT. Not SV, well, Conscripts with SVTs fighting the Painful Slayers. Shredding them quite effectively along with the other squad. Good to use the cover right there. Keeping them pinned in their base. No, no, okay. So, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that, Puma. Let me rephrase that. I was expecting the Tiger Ace, but if he can use the mass uh, to stu correctly or like and effectively, he can absolutely knock this out. You don't need always the bigger tank in order to take out, uh, you know, another tank. You could absolutely use this. Now, for example, you could use the, the heat shell to shock it, to keep it pinned and then fire another volley or come in with the Panzerfaust. The Tiger Ace, yes, would do a lot of damage to it and would do a lot more um, than let's say the Stugs would by itself, but again, sometimes you need the smaller, you need a lot more smaller units than you need one big target. But sometimes that big unit comes into play when the enemy doesn't have enough AT or something along those lines. Sorry for construing my words earlier. That's what I was trying to get my point across for. But in any case, we're kind of for trying to grab this point, but these AT guns will not let it. T-70 as well, Vet 3 helps kill that poor for Cadworfer. Luckily, they reman it. Puma coming on in. Nice shot on target. T-70 pulling back. Unfortunately, the T-3045 comes in to make sure they don't advance. Stuga and Puma getting some great shots on target. P Bring it down the half health. Stu coming in from the side, shocking the MG as well. Conscripts though rushing on in against the double MG line. They don't have uh, Molotovs, so they can't throw it, nor are they even in range for it. There's a second T-34, though, lying in the wings, waiting maybe for this Stu to be out of position to engage. T-70, I love this, opening fire on the Puma, being like, come at me, bro. Come at me, bro. And it 
Oh, put T-34's revenge. He's going in. The smoke could allow him for... Oh, yep. Runs over some units. Tries going for the rush. Doesn't. And AT gun gets a great shot on the Puma. This unfortunate T-34 will die. But the Puma is more valuable to the Axis as they are currently lacking a lot of fuel. Good. Oh, fantastic job with the Cervic Rocket Run. Coming in. Killing a, a Stug. And uh, yeah, it's a big loss for the Axis. Now, overall... I will say this, Axis uh, need to capture VP points, and they need to somehow get out of their base. Trying to go for the run over, Stu trying to stop him, he did lose the more valuable one, now just going for a Panzer IV. Suka coming in, kind of missing target, Volk Squad being pushed back, Stu trying desperately to fight off the t-34 not enough and it's a direct hit he rams it oh my god not only does he not only does he kill the stew he kicks in the balls before it dies god dang it oh my lord all right that's that's pretty funny that's that's pretty funny oh anyway Unfortunately, the a it looks like it's pretty much GG for the Axis. Tazara, Rutra, you gave it your all. You had a... You, there was a moment where I saw the a the allies on the back foot. But alas. What it wasn't meant to be. And I'm assuming at this point they surrender. Oh, wait. Rutra was actually replaced by an AI. Uh, unfortunate. Um, but I, yeah, I believe they surrendered at this point. I would have to assume. But in any case, let's double check, uh, d double check overall damage. Von Ivan, don't know if it's meant to be or not. 117 in total amount of kills. Very nice. Although, uh, most damage and kills goes to Bao Lang, who did much better in this game with his infantry. Uh, his armor, I think, with especially his T-34 is maybe a little bit better. But his T-70, you did ex extremely well with. And your conscripts were on point. Overall, if we double check his... Kills, 71 kills with his conscripts. Not a single one died. Von Ivan. Real quick, did you lose any conscripts? You did, you lost two. Okay. I was going to say, no conscripts lost. Nah, okay, maybe one. Okay, for, for one guy, no conscripts lost. Did very well, 22 kills with the T-34. Uh, Dazara, best unit was the Stug. Did a lot of damage, 10,000, but not enough to kill the armor. And then the Puma was your most damage. But yeah, overall, Axis incredibly close, but Dazar did get a little more kills. Uh, overall, I, if I had to say decisively, I'd say the armor engagement. And unfortunately, the heavy focus on Mechanized, I think, really sealed the deal. I think Rucha might have been a bit better if he didn't get the Stuka. As we see, the Stuka only got six kills. Him maybe saving up for... Uh, on his, it, it's, it's rough of like, what do you get? But a Panther might have been able to fight the armor... You could have maybe gotten a medical and then deployed a king at the last, like, minute. But uh, that would have been unsure. That's a bit more of an unknown. But in any case, uh, that's going to be game. And that's going to be tier. So Bao Lang and Von Ivan move up for the next round. Hello, everyone. Before you guys go, I want to give a special shout out to Patreon supporters Malam, JoeyG240, Streaking Wookie, Spartacus, Rifle, Pyroshark, Ollie. Junior Chicklist, Ion, Ace, Ranger, 412, Jacob Oswai, and GTA. Thank you all for your amazing support, and thanks again to the patrons as well down below. It's been Shot 17 and I'll see all of you next time.